Welcome to Cilio on Security, where we unlock the answers to your burning privacy questions. I'm John Cilio, and today's question, if we can put a man in outer space, shouldn't there be some easy way to keep criminals out of our internet space? Well, when it comes to hackers, it turns out the cyber devil is in the digital details. So we've brought in our IT guru, a man crazy enough to take time away from Comic-Con and the Leonard Nimoy live long and prosper cruise to be with us. Curtis Naselbaum, welcome to Cilio on Security. Greetings, friend. Yeah, you must be using a teraflop uplink to get that impeccable video transmission all the way out here to the bridge of the, the cruise ship Enterprise. I have no idea. Oh, oh, that's a shame. Curtis, help us here. How do we keep hackers out of our online accounts? We don't want them hijacking our Facebook profile, cyber snooping through our Gmails, or worse yet, cashing out our bank account, our, our investments, our, our nitcoins. Ah, uh, Bob, that, that'd be bitcoins. Oh, right, Curtis, and my name is John. John, to answer your question, it's absolutely, absolutely abundantly transparent to even the most basic of intellects that configuring simple multi-factor authentication protocol is the optimal methodology for this particular threat scenario. I uh, totally agree, but maybe you should explain for the benefit of the folks out there who don't speak our you language. No, two-step verification where the requesting party is required to provide, at minimum, two forms of credentialing, one factor corresponding to something they know, and the other dependent upon something they possess. So if I hear you right, we need to set up a two-step login process, not just a simple password that can be hacked or guessed. So it's like when we go to an ATM machine and we provide two things, an ATM card that we have, and then a PIN number that we know. It's a, it's a two-part procedure. Without both of those, it's hard to hack, but how do we do that online? Well, that's a rudimentary explanation for, for the common man. A more technologically accurate analogy uh, would be text verification. Is that like spell check? Just kidding. Is that where we get a code texted to our mobile phone the minute we've entered our password on the website? So the password is something we know, and the mobile phone with the text on it is something we have. Two factors to unlock the account. Two steps needed to log in. So, why does it protect us? Well, it's because, genius, the thief can't possess both your virtual authentication token and your physical possession factor simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> you mean they don't have your password and your cell phone at the same time? So even if the thief hacks your password out of a database, like in the target breach, it's mm -hmm. useless without the code that comes to your phone. Exactly. It would border on, uh, on impossible, even with quantum physics and time bending relativity for someone not physically present to possess both, except of course in Star Trek episode 275.2 that was never aired because it was too real and far too complicated for non-Vulcans. Ah, network TV! Curtis, as always, thanks for joining us. Bob, live long and prosper. All right, Curtis, now let's show everyone an actual example of how simple it is to use two-step logins. Get all that spit there, buddy. Okay, let's see a two-step login at work. Let's say that I want to get into my Gmail account. So up in the upper right-hand corner, I just go in and I click on Gmail. At that point, that's when it asks me for a password. And normally, you would simply enter the password and be done. But with two-step logins, now what I want to do is switch over and we're going to take a look at my smartphone so that you can see the code come through. And I'm now clicking on the sign in button right now. And watch what happens. There we go. There's the, t the second step of the code 765 798. 765 798. So we're going to go back over to here and type in 765 798. That is the code that has come to our smartphone. And when we click verify, suddenly we're into our email program. We didn't get in just with a passcode. We had to have this second code on our phone. And what that means is that the criminal may have hacked into the password database, but unless they have our, our cell phone, our mobile as well, there's no way for them to get into that account to take it over and to use it, for example, to, to reset a banking password. That's what makes two-step logins or two-factor authentication so incredibly strong. 
Thanks for joining us on this episode of Cilio on Security. If you'd like to bring me in to speak to your audience with or without Curtis Nasalbaum, please visit our website at Cilio.com. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. What's your name? Nikki. Nikki. A little bit more information. <laughs> How about when we go through it together, item by juicy item? No, I wouldn't do that. Nikki, it's almost impossible to go through everything you need to do to protect something this large in one session. So I would like to offer you a free copy of my book. First, let me give that back to you. You're tired of carrying it, aren't you? I'm the thing is heavy. Free copy of my book, Privacy Means Profit. Trust me, it will help. Chapter five. <laughs> if you would just hold the book up for a second. Yeah. A little further from your face. Yeah. Oh, I got. Oh, it makes it easier to turn into a driver's license. Oh.